Greetings and welcome. My name is Max Lavis. I'm a PhD student at the Leibniz Universität Hannover and it is a great honor for me to present our work on well-calibrated regression uncertainty for deep learning with medical imaging. Within the next 15 minutes, I will talk about why calibrated uncertainty estimation is important, how calibration can be achieved, and present results for different medical regression tasks, including rejection of uncertain predictions and application to out-of-distribution detection. Regression in medical imaging with deep learning has been applied to a variety of tasks, including age estimation from hand X-ray, natural landmark localization, cell detection in histology, or instrument pose estimation. By predicting the coordinates of object borders, segmentation can also be performed as a regression task. And in deformable registration, a continuous displacement field is predicted for each coordinate of the input image, which has also recently been addressed by CNNs for regression. Reliable predictions are necessary in all, safe, in all safety critical applications of deep learning. More important than absolute accuracy is that we recognize uncertain predictions and, if necessary, reject them. In general, we can distinguish between two types of uncertainty, namely aleatoric and epistemic uncertainty. I would like to explain this using the example of the segmentation of this street scene. The aleatoric uncertainty results from ambiguous data, for example from sensor noise. Here, the borders of objects have high aleatoric uncertainty due to the, and due to the limited resolution of the image sensor, it is not clear to which class a border pixel belongs. The epistemic uncertainty arises from ignorance through training with limited data. We see that the sidewalk has high epistemic uncertainty and this may mean that gray concrete was not sufficiently present in the training data as a sidewalk. But how can we quantify predictive uncertainty? Bayesian neural networks provide one mathematical tool to determine uncertainties and to recognize unreliable predictions. However, uncertainty obtained by deep Bayesian nets tend to be miscalibrated. That is, it does not correspond well with the model error. The predictive uncertainty, taking into account both types of uncertainty, is underestimated and does not allow robust detection of uncertain predictions at test time. First, I want to discuss the estimation of aleatoric uncertainty. The goal of our regression model is to predict a continuous target value Y given a new input X and a training set of images and corresponding target values. We assume that Y has a Gaussian distribution with mean equal to Y hat and variance sigma hat squared. A neural network F with parameters theta outputs these values for a given input. To train F, we place a Gaussian prior over the parameters and perform maximum posterior estimation. This is done by minimizing the negative log likelihood with added weight decay. Here, y and sigma are estimated jointly by finding theta that minimizes this loss function. In this case, sigma squared captures the aleatoric uncertainty that is inherent in the data. However, if we ignore the dependence through theta for a moment, the solution to this loss function decouples estimation of y and sigma squared. If we minimize the loss function with respect to sigma squared, we see that sigma squared should perfectly reflect the squared error. However, it is estimated relative to the estimated mean y hat and therefore it is biased. In fact, the maximum posterior solution systematically underestimates sigma squared, which is a phenomenon of overfitting the training set. In this figure, we see uh, the mean squared error and the mean aleatoric uncertainty on the training and test set for two different data sets. The squared error is lower on the training set and sigma squared on new samples will be systematically too low. The green line shows the MSE on the test set, but sigma squared on the test set, shown by the red line, does not reflect this. This is a problem, especially in deep learning, where models have million of, millions of parameters and tend to overfit. Early stopping, for example at epoch 50 here, would result in correct estimation of sigma squared. However, this would not be optimal in terms of test MSE as the test MSE still decreases over the course of the training. 
Luckily, the underestimation of sigma squared can be corrected by post-training calibration. And in our case, we introduce a simple learnable scalar parameter to rescale sigma. We first derive sigma scaling for aleatoric uncertainty and subsequently extend it to jointly calibrate both types of uncertainty. Using a Gaussian model, we scale the standard deviation sigma with a scalar value s to recalibrate the probability density function. This negative log likelihood is our new optimization objective. The loss function is optimized with respect to s with fixed weights theta of the neural net. s is found in a separate calibration phase after training to recalibrate the aleatoric uncertainty using a dedicated calibration dataset. We can use gradient descent for this, however, in case of a single scalar, the solution to this loss function can also be written in closed form. We refer to this as sigma scaling and use it to calibrate both uncertainties in the next step. So far, we have assumed a maximum posterior point estimate for the parameters theta, which does not consider the epistemic uncertainty. Therefore, we extend the neural net into a fully Bayesian model under the variational inference framework with Monte Carlo dropout. In Monte Carlo dropout, the model is trained with dropout and dropout is applied uh, at test time by performing multiple stochastic forward passes to sample from the approximate Bayesian posterior. We use Monte Carlo integration to approximate the predictive variance and use this as our measure of uncertainty. However, it is known that variational approximations uh, underestimate the predictive variance, which results in miscalibrated uncertainty. And therefore, we apply sigma scaling to recalibrate the predictive uncertainty. This allows a lower squared error compared to early stopping, as shown earlier, but reduces underestimation of uncertainty, as shown in the following. But before assessing the effectiveness of sigma scaling experimentally, we need to define an error metric to quantify miscalibration. First, we define miscalibration as uh, the difference in the expectation between the squared error and the predictive uncertainty. It means, for example, that in a batch of images, all predicted with an uncertainty of 0.5, the expectation of the squared error should also equal 0.5. This, however, cannot um, be evaluated with finite data. We approximate this with the expected uncertainty calibration error for regression, or UCE for short. The uncertainty output of a deep model is partitioned into m bins with equal width, and a weighted average of the difference between the predictive error and uncertainty is used. That means that the discrepancy between error and uncertainty is weighted by the numbers of samples per bin. And additionally, as shown on the right, we plot the error versus the uncertainty to create such calibration diagrams. In our experiments, we use four different uh, datasets and three deep neural network architectures to evaluate recalibration with sigma scaling. The datasets were selected to represent various regression tasks in medical imaging with different dimensions of the target value y. The first task is to predict tumor celerity in whole slides of cancerous breast tissue. The next is hand X-ray age regression. The third is surgical instrument tracking on endoscopic images. And the last task is to estimate the six degree of freedom needle pose in optical coherence tomography scans. All datasets are publicly available and we trained the networks on the datasets and used sigma scaling to calibrate the uncertainty afterwards using the validation set. We first present the calibration of uncertainty measured by the proposed UCE for regression and show calibration diagrams. Additionally, we show how uncertain predictions can robustly be rejected based on calibrated uncertainty. And we also performed experiments with out of distribution data. However, due to the limited time, we skip them here and invite the interested listener to have a look into our paper. The first result I want to show you is a bit artificial, but visualizes how calibration can close the gap between test MSE and uncertainty. We performed sigma scaling to calibrate the aleatoric uncertainty during the training. On the right, the uncalibrated case is shown again, where you see the gap between the green and the red plot. 
In the left figure, sigma scaling is used after every epoch using the validation set. And as you can see, the deep model no longer underestimates the uncertainty on unseen test data. Note that we used calibration only at test time here to show the discrepancy. However, this does not contain the full predictive uncertainty, which we will now have a look on. At. This slide shows calibration diagrams where the MSE is shown versus the predictive uncertainty. The corresponding UCE values are shown within the plots and the dashed lines denote perfect calibration. The first column shows the uncalibrated case and again reveals the underestimation of uncertainty. The column in the middle shows the results for auxiliary scaling and the right column shows results for sigma scaling. In auxiliary scaling, instead of a single scalar, we used a more powerful, fully connected neural network with one hidden layer and ReLU activations as a recalibration method. When having a look at the top row, which shows results for ResNet 101 on the breast cancer dataset, we see that both methods are able to reduce miscalibration considerably. As already shown for classification tasks, but still somehow surprisingly for me, is that the simpler sigma scaling often outperforms the auxiliary scaling. One reason for this is that the more powerful auxiliary scaling sometimes overfits the calibration set, leading to worse calibration on the final test set. And in the bottom row, which shows results for DenseNet 201 on the end of this data set, both methods perform quite similar. Next, we apply the well-calibrated models to detect and reject uncertain predictions. An uncertainty threshold is defined and all predictions from the test set are rejected where the uncertainty is higher than this threshold. We lower the threshold stepwise and observe the resulting mean MSE. Moreover, it was stated in the literature that the deep ensembles provide better calibrated uncertainty than Monte Carlo dropout and we therefore compare uh, two uncertainties from a five ensemble in this experiment. The width of the shaded area here visualizes the percentage of rejected predictions and with a decreasing threshold we expect a linear decrease in test MSE, as shown by, by the dashed line. The ensemble, however, shows an increase in test MSE first and then a sudden decrease. After sigma scaling, on the other hand, the MSE decreases monotonically with the uncertainty threshold. We therefore conclude that uncertainty from calibrated Bayesian nets are more suitable for detecting unreliable predictions. And finally, a practical example result from end of this test set is shown. The task is to predict pixel coordinates of the forceps shaft center. The ground truth is shown by the red cross and the predicted mean is shown by the blue cross. The shaded region around the estimated uh, shows the estimated square root of the uncertainty. Before calibration on the left, the uncertainty is underestimated and the true instrument position does not fall into the predictive uncertainty region around Y hat. After calibration with sigma scaling on the right, the uncertainty better reflects the predictive error. This would allow a more robust detection of tracking failure. And with this impression, I want to conclude my presentation. In our paper, well-calibrated predictive uncertainty for regression in medical imaging is discussed. Both calibration methods considerably reduce miscalibration of the predictive uncertainty. If a model is already well-calibrated, sigma scaling does not negatively affect the calibration, which uh, results in S approaching 1. Well-calibrated uncertainty from Monte Carlo dropout is able to reliably detect a shift in the data distribution. Calibrated Bayesian nets even outperform ensembles on the rejection tasks or task. And sigma scaling is simple to implement. It does not change the predictive mean and thus does not affect the model accuracy. The disconnection between test MSE and test uncertainty can successfully be closed, which creates highly accurate models with reliable uncertainty estimates. Uncertainty should be considered in any medical imaging task that is approached with deep learning. Well-calibrated uncertainty is of great importance for decision-making and it is anticipated to increase patient safety. Thank you very much for your attention. I happily take any suggestions or questions on our work. You can send me an email or reach out on Twitter. And in the end, 
I want to uh, thank my collaborators and co-authors and I want to thank you for listening. Goodbye.